Welcome back to the 6th Gear Garage. Today, we have another wireless camera install. This is the latest from Autovox, and it's going on my 80 series Land Cruiser. This is a pretty big vehicle, and visibility from the front seats isn't the best. And I have engines and parts in the back corner of the garage where I back in. So this wireless backup camera is an easy solution to my tight parking. Here's the optional solar panel. Some pre-cut adhesive strips. Here's the main camera assembly. This swivels to adjust the aim. And the wireless monitor to mount inside my vehicle. Let's see what's in the accessories box here. We've got a tiny Allen wrench, the suction mount for the monitor, a USB cable for the initial charge, and the power cable that plugs into the 12 volt outlet. I'll put a link to this camera in the description. The first thing I need to do is get the USB cable and pop this cover off of the end of the camera. Plug in the cable and using the plug from a phone or a tablet, let it charge. Directions say the initial charge takes four to five hours. So I've got the camera here. It's gonna mount like this. And here's the optional solar charging panel. This plugs into the camera's USB port. Here's the port. And this is the cover that comes on it if you don't use a solar panel. This only fits one way, just like that. There we go. If you wanted the solar panel mounted somewhere else besides right on the camera, you can unscrew this clamp and the kit comes with this uh, pre-cut double-sided adhesive. And you can use that to mount it at the bottom of your license plate if it doesn't get enough sun up on the top. Now get the tiny Allen wrench and remove this little screw from the underside of the camera. Then the solar panel will clip on over the camera and line up that hole so it'll face out like that. Now get the tiny screw back in the hole and tighten it down with the Allen wrench. Done. That's not going anywhere. This 80 was imported from Japan, so the plate holes are a little farther apart than the US ones. So I have to drill holes in my US plates to mount them on this vehicle. Kudos to Autobox though, they have slotted mounting holes on the camera, so it works with either size. Next, remove the license plate, peel one side of the adhesive mount, and apply it to the outside of the camera. Now the camera is ready to mount on the back side of the license plate. Normally, you'd peel this off to expose the adhesive, but this isn't my actual license plate, so I'll leave it on for right now. And it'll look like this when it's installed. And now I can fine tune this camera based on the height it sits on my vehicle. Here's the monitor, and here's the mount for the monitor. It swivels and locks here, so you can fine tune it. And on the back, here is the suction cup where it mounts. Pull this guy off. I think I'm gonna mount this up here, above my cracked dash pad. Next, I need to plug the monitor in to the 12 volt adapter. So I ran the wire. I'm just gonna tuck it across the dash there, then down around the edge and across the underside. And ends up right here by the 12 volt adapter. Plenty of wire. The 12 volt adapter even has a built-in USB, so you can still charge your phone. I shut the door and turn off the lights in the garage. You can see how clear it is. There's still daylight coming in the windows though. I'll do a night test later. The screen shuts off after a minute to conserve the battery. To turn it back on, just push the button on the 12 volt adapter. There's a lot of options here. A second camera selection in case you also put one on the front plate paired to the camera. Brightness and contrast controls, although it seems perfect for me right out of the box. You can mirror the image, which you'd want for a front mount camera, or upside down if you mounted the camera upside down. The time it stays on, default is one minute. You can turn the guidelines on or off and reset. All right, 
We're back for the night test. Backing up into the garage here. Gotta love that uh, JDM backup beeper. There we go. The monitor was too bright for my phone. Had to uh, adjust the aperture. This is with my reverse lights and brake lights. So it's really well lit. There's no lights at all. And that's just the tail lights. That's it for today. I'll put a link to this camera in the description. And as always, thanks for watching.